and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for an Abzan mid-range donation deck to start the stream off here today. So as you can tell by our deck list here, we are uh, kind of focused on the angels for our mid-range deck here. We have you know Resplendent, Seraph of the Skills, and Lyra. Those are going to be like our, our main threats that we have going on here. Um, we got a few removal spells um, underneath them for the first few turns of the game with Prison Realm, Cast Down, Trophy. Uh, we even have some discard with Duress, which I honestly don't mind for main deck Duress these days. Like Duress is just pretty good against everybody. There's not really decks that Duress isn't good against with everybody playing Planeswalkers. Um, and then we have those same Planeswalkers up at our top end. And the two that our deck is really focused on is Soren and Liliana with three copies of each of those. And there's an old school Vivian in here as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's what our, our deck's all about. Um, you know, we got these angels. We got like the Paradise Druid help ramp out into them and everything. Find Finality can either get them back or be a sweeper if we need the sweeper part and so on. So we have just a bunch of, you know, we have a bunch of like kind of different cards that don't necessarily play a ton with here. Um, but, you know, like it's it's a different configuration of an Abzan mid-range deck. So it looks pretty interesting. So let's uh, give this a good try here and see how it goes. So just like with all donation decks that we have, um, I always like playing them through the tr traditional constructed queue here on Arena, where we pay our 1,000 gold, and we play until we win five matches or lose two, whichever comes first. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do today as well. <laughs> Hey, WQ, you're Taiwanese, so it's 3 a.m. already there. Ooh. But yeah, glad I can help you get some sleep <laughs> with my voice here. Um, but yeah, thanks for staying up late and catching the stream. Lotus Field. That card looks really sweet. It's probably, well, not probably, but it could be broken somehow. That's a good one. Paul Mabi. Previously, DJ Polyb is wonderful and resub in here, and thank you so much, Paul. Happy Friday. Hope you're kicking off your weekend well. All right, Lyra Dawnbringer is a perfect draw here against Mono White. It's definitely the card we want. So we can have Paradise Druid on two. Hmm. Pride Mate's pretty good. Paradise Druid on two get to Resplendent Angel on 3, Lyra on 4, another Resplendent Angel on 5, and win. So Blood Sun... So Blood Sun with Lotus Field means... All right, change of plans. With this pride mate going crazy, actually, I'm going to block here. They don't get that extra trigger every turn. We'll just go resplendent into resplendent into Lyra. Instead of resplendent, Lyra, resplendent. So if they want to attack with all three creatures, you know, we get to eat one of them. Okay, so it enters untapped, and it doesn't get rid of the hexproof, right? Like the, or or does it? Like does, basically that's what I'm wondering. Like does it get rid of hexproof? Okay, so it, hexproof is gone. But you do not have to sacrifice. That's not good for us. That is not good.
just just write trophy go go or just write assassin's trophy don't need to have childish abbreviations the second person today we just started the stream why do you Hey, Yud. Where's the high? Oh, my high emote's gone. Okay, so we're playing against a mono white aggro ish deck. You know, life gain with a lot of enchantment removal. So let's. Kill some enchantments, Mortify, Shalai, come on in to do some blocking, Othakaya's and Kaya's Wraths, and another Assassin's Trophy, sound good, so does Golgari Queen. It's a whole lot of fours, probably need to trim up this four slot here. Um, so find finality, while the finality part, giving the creatures minus four, minus four is pretty cool. I don't really expect our creatures to be dying too much for the find part, and with us having Kaya's Wrath, Anyway, I'm just going to take out the finalities. All right, so that's step number one. Step number two, Liliana's kind of slow. I'm going get, to gonna get rid of a Soren or maybe two, because I want to just trim up this four mana slot and with us bring in Golgari Queen and Shalai. Let's get rid of all the Liliana's. And yeah, another Soren, and then we're sitting at 62 now. Just two duress, I guess. Duress is perfectly fine. But I want to make sure that we have a lot of reactive spells for the permanence in play. Hey, Testawat. Goblet Shrine. I think this deck should be called Abzenjil. That's a little bit of like I guess I guess that works. So yeah, if I last game if I would have gone Druid and chumped with Druid and then played Lyra the next turn, I would have to just chump with the Lyra. You know, like because if I would have done that. I would have gone to seven because they would have gained another life. The primate would have been an eight eight, and I would have just had to um, chump block with the the Lyra on the eight eight. Alright, Primate out of here. That was not something I was expecting. Alright, so you can get Resplendent Angel out of here instead of playing Seraph because if they have some other kind of trick or something that gains them more life, I don't want them getting more tokens. This also means that they only have the two creatures, they're not flipping Legion's Landing here. Hey, what's up, Renzino? Happy Friday. So yeah, they gained, if you don't know what just happened there, they gained two life from playing Moments of 
moment to triumph and pumped up the vampire to be a 3-3 life linker so they gained three more life when the vampire dealt damage so they gained five life total so they got to trigger the resplendent angel there <laughs> ow ow Are they actually casting Conclave Tribunal on Othakaya? I suppose so. So just one card in hand. Should be able to do just fine against one card. Let's see how we do. Yeah, Moma Triumph is a nice, nice, neat little party trick. Do they have another one? Hmm. Well, I'll just give my creature Death Touch. Okay. Play Vivian, start ticking up. Play the Resplendent Angel. Resplendent Angel it is. Looking quite good for us here. It'll take us a while to win. With our opponent at 32. But I think we got this one. Cool, Atrio. Yeah, I'll, to, I'll take a look at it after stream. I, I'm not in Discord during the stream. Because I can, I can do an okay job of playing Magic and also reading chat and talking with chat while, while playing, but not also on another, but not also reading and chatting in another place as well. Hey, B99. It's just going to be... Um, yeah, it's just going to be me activating Resplendent Angel. Here, just gain 5 life a turn, put a 4-4 four, four into play. I mean, that's just... That's just our my best option, really. I will defend hmm. the weak at every opportunity. Hey, Bataro. Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. Our fourth sub already of the day. Wait, is this indestructible? No. Oh. That's convenient. Now we don't need to activate Resplendent Angel because this thing will just gain five. And conveniently, they don't have the Healer's Hawk to block. So Gideon's gone. And we're going to a game three. <laughs> that was convenient. <laughs> All right, anything we want to change here for game three? 
mean, finality is good. I cost six mana, and we have Kaya's Wrath, so. Do I really need Golgari Queen? Maybe not. We have a lot of other removal. Let's play another Duress instead of a Golgari Queen. A Duress to take enchantment removal to protect our angels. Also, trims our curve some. Which is from heaven. All those fours. <laughs> Nexus is almost out. Almost out of the format. So I guess the, my point of my duress will probably be just to take... Will be to take, you know, an, an enchantment removal spell. So no no reason just to cast the duress right now, because maybe they don't have it. We don't have any threats right now anyway. Like, we can wait till we have a threat. Well, there you go. And... Wait until we play it then. Um... So it could trophy the Legion's Landing. I'm going to do that. We're going to take a hit for four here. Down to 15. Take a bigger hit next turn for a lot more. Looks like a hit for 10 next turn. And then Kaya's Wrath. Gideon would be like the one card that I want to duress right now if they had a Gideon in hand. That would be the one card. <laughs> hey, Bant for life. Hope you're having a good start to your weekend. So it's going to be 11. What? They scared to settle the wreckage with my 2 mana? Alright, we got 2 white. 2 black. That means Kai's Wrath. All right, now we get to duress first. They have two enchantment removal spells. Well, we'll take take the one where they scry, I suppose. Yeah. No. No, <laughs> Kaya's Wrath, you only gain life for how many creatures you have in play for Kaya's Wrath. And so, yeah, we didn't have any creatures in play, so we didn't gain any life. You don't gain life for the creatures that your opponents have. A number of creatures you controlled. All right, getting that Resplendent Angel back on end step, so we get to activate it here. That's a good draw. Man, Resplendent Angel so good. It's a one angel army. Good thing we drew this trophy. Yeah, 
Yeah, our opponent was not expecting the wrath there. Yeah, I'm going to miss Resplendent Angel and Lyra Dawnbringer. I'm going to miss them. Wow. Settle. All right. Got me. <laughs> I got gut. Sell the wreckage. Taking care of it. Um, I mean, they, they have the... So they drew the, the plus two, plus two card. I don't really have a... I mean... Yeah, I mean, I just block. I don't really have, like, a good reason not to block still. Still look, liking where we're at. Drawing two Seraphs in a row was pretty clutch. Same with that Lyra. So we are drawn well. Could be... Could be because we got a couple of lands out of our deck with the Settle, maybe. I kept... Well, I guess I drew the Seraph. But I was keeping one... I was already, like, doing that play before it happened, I suppose. I was keeping one token back. Um, for their 1 1. They are one mana short from activating Resplendent Angel. One mana short. Got another plus two, plus two card. Yep. I should be given this the Seraph of the Scales Vigilance, to be honest, but oh well. More Seraph. Cause yeah, I had that I had that one mana for, or no, I had two mana, so yeah. Could have done that. Oh well. So one activation of Resplendent Angel will not allow it to attack through Lyra. All right, we'll do it this time. Vigilance.
I haven't really done the math here. 10, 11, 12. Oh, don't block Lyra. That is not the card to block. That is just really not the card to block. So if our opponent would have blocked a Seraph of the Scales, I couldn't quite kill them. If they would have blocked... the 1-1 one, one token, they'd be dead. Blocking Lyra, you know, that was just not not the card to block. Hey, Mr. Moo. Happy Friday. Okay, we are starting off with a win. 1-0. You think Seraph of the Scales has the best animation? It's a good one. It's a good one. I, I think I like Ravager Worm the most, as far as animations go. I think that's that's one. I think that's my favorite. Oh yeah, Tezzeret. I know we were talking about this the other day. We were going through the cards. Yeah, Tezzeret. Uh, but yeah, Crucible Worlds and Mox Opal are kind of evenly good. I like both of those. Just PG language, please. Don't need to cuss. In chat. Want to be family friendly. No, not anymore, Mr. Moo. I, I used to go to FNM uh, a long time ago when I first started playing and everything, but with streaming here being what I do every day, you know, like this is what I. I do on Fridays also. Instead of going to FNM, I, you know, here on stream. What know you of dragons? <laughs> Keep an open mind. Mm hmm. The Soren's gonna die. The Soren's gonna kill, kill Narset, and then die. That Mox Amber was really, really nice of them getting five mana whenever I had, you know, on like my turn three, they were playing Sarkin. Be a, you know, they can just plus and attack Sark Soren with both, and Soren dies, but they don't get to actually deal damage with the Narset. Um. Sorry, I'm late. The big question is whether I want to play Vivian or Lyra here, and I'm pretty sure it's just Lyra for our next turn. Bounce the dragon. Dragon, dragon. Dang. The past, present, and future. Thoughtfulness before action. I will call the dragons. <laughs> dragon yeah, five color reborns up next. Lose. I changed the stream title so it says Abs and Angels first now. I'm not really beating another Teferi. I just get a bounce. Just get a bounce Lyra again. protect you a 
go this route so we at least get that uh, token out of there. Glad we at least have one Elder Spell on the sideboard. I love a big challenge. This should be fun. But if I'm playing black these days, I'm kind of hard pressed not to be playing a lot of Elder Spells. No, I could not cast down Sarkin when he plus one for a few reasons. Sarkin is legendary, so cast down cast down only kills non legendary creatures. Um, that's one thing, and then second, they have a Teferi in play. I can't cast spells on their turn either, so that's another problem there. All right, Gideon's coming on in. Elder spell contempts. Both the Kayas are very good at shooting the Planeswalkers. Get another trophy. Gulgari Queen can eat the smaller ones. That all looks pretty good. We can get a little bit of extra card advantage with the Vivians. <clears throat> this is kind of why I like Ugin over Liliana. Like Liliana making two twos just doesn't doesn't really matter. Where Ugin can, you know, actually destroy like those other planeswalkers, which is huge. All right, so sixty three. Prison Realm gets rid of a Planeswalker for a little bit, but then they have like Little Teferi can bounce Prison Realm. Hmm. So I just want to take those out. I'll keep one in and take a Resplendent Angel out because of Clarion. This may be a keep. I guess we'd have to, you know, we had to draw green mana. How many green sources do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna have ten green sources. Okay, well we can't we can't keep that then. All right, found all the green sources. Oh, the second one, Storm. Yeah, I decided I'm just gonna use some some gold and pick up pick those up later. Yeah, Alexis Pro. So I want to get into arena after having a a mass. Massive paper collection was the best way to start having good decks and a bunch of playables. Uh, there really isn't any other way besides... Like, there's only two things you can do. You can either... You can either purchase... You know, purchase gems. At the $100 gem pack gives you, you know, like, your best gems per dollar than the other gem packs, than the cheaper ones. 
So you purchase gems and then buy boosters. And, you know, crack open the boosters. Or... Um, or you can use those gems to do draft and do sealed. So, you know, depending on if you like drafting and sealed, that's the other option. But those are, honestly, like those are the, those are the only options here with Arena. No, you can't buy cards directly. No. Every every six packs that you open, you get a rare wild card that you can turn in for any rare. Um, so like that's how you get like direct Five cards. We make reveal who we are. And then uh, um, the The fourth time that would happen, so like every 24 packs, then you get a mythic rare wild card. So you get a, you can, you know, trade that in for any mythic. So the best packs to open are probably the, um, those are probably going to be the Ravnica ones, Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance, because those are the ones with the Shocklands. But War of the Spark packs are also very good. War of the Spark is just so deep with so many good cards. So, like, those are... War of the Spark packs are really good. I can no longer stand by and here we go. I won't let you win. <laughs> This might be a bad idea. All right, we're in this to ferry down. Do you want me to phase you out of time? We could definitely use another land. Preferably a white source. Don't worry, I got this. Preferably a white black source. Hey, there we go. Dang. Comes into play tap though. But we'll have it starting next turn. Alright, let's go Seraph. Boo. So if I play Soren and, you know, I'm minus four to get... Seraph for the scales back, my Soren's died. My Soren dies. So that's why I'm going Resplendent Angel first, so that like if they kill Resplendent Angel, I can bring back Resplendent Angel with Soren and have both the Angel and the Soren in play. But it looks like our Angel's not dying. And it looks like they have a lot of lands over there, which is good. Good for us. So let's get a white and a black. The ringing of my sword is your death knell. Not valuing Paradise Druid too highly. I'm going to tick up here. <laughs> I'm gonna try to tick up and then minus for Seraph next turn. Well, their Mox Amber was really clutch last game. 
Not so clutch here. I've seen things that would break hey, someone cheeky. like you. Happy Friday. What were you hedging against to not playing Soren before attacking? Um, I don't know. Maybe my opponent has something. I don't know. I don't know, I don't like giving my opponent more information about how the tur turn's gonna be until I have to. Soren would've gave our creatures lifelink, of course, first before damage, but does the lifelink matter in that matchup? I don't think so. Real Rankler with that, that resub, thank you so much, Real Rankler. Happy year, you're amazing. Thank you very much. Okay, looking good. Maybe... Maybe Shalai's actually kind of decent in this matchup, maybe. Uh, it's not so good against Little Teferi, but it does keep them from shocking other things. And it doesn't die to Deafening Clarion. But it's also another 4-mana card, and we already have a lot of 4-mana cards. I'll play one over Resplendent, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. I c so, yeah, so if I go with the lifelink, I trigger the angel. I, I don't... I wasn't really even considering that part. I was just thinking of the gaining life, but I... Yeah, I didn't really consider the... Trigger the angel by playing Soren first. The Resplendent Angel, that is. Hey, Atriu, using that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. It was Little Chigi was MVMT. Our sixth sub of the day. I wonder if they got a spell pierce. Gonna go ahead and duress and trophy here, even though it gives them a land, but you know, see if they have like a a five mana planeswalker that I need to get rid of <clears throat> like this here, Sarkin. When we see them have counter magic, I'm I won't risk it. And then drawing a counter spell, and then I'm like really, really far behind. Bounce out the Kaya. Let's slow this down. Not no, bouncing other Kaya? Not making this up as I go. Let's deal with that. So, of course, Seraph gets Lava Coiled, which isn't ideal. I'll taste your neck. You'll taste my blade. Yeah, I think they should have bounced out the guy. That was uncalled for. <laughs>
bounce a token. Got to bounce something. No. That's more like it. Hey, awesome, Espita. Glad you're yeah, glad you're enjoying the the Jund revival deck from last night and having some good success with it. Awesome. Stop them now. This Othakai is gonna do some good work for us though. Every time they try attacking Soren, you know, like each turn they get a loyalty off of Soren, but each turn we deal two to them and gain two. Also. I could, you know, be pinging them instead of Teferi. I've got time. But I don't think that's really worth it, because if I ping if I keep pinging Teferi, then they can't really minus the Teferi. I am familiar with pain. Oh, it's Atru. Not Atriu. Hmm. Time for plan I as soon as I think of one time. I don't know, maybe I should be just pinging them. And shame being on that five month streak as well. Here goes nothing. Thanks for that continued support. We have seven subs already today. This is match number two on the day. Yesterday we had nine subscribers. This is awesome. Y'all are amazing. So they're at 14. Don't make another move. Time. It's a very slow burn. Let's try this. Ha, <laughs> they did bounce the other guy finally. Alright, so definitely assuming that means they have a counter spell. <laughs> but they found yeah. Nothing. Definitely think that mean that means they found a counter spell now. We will meet again. <laughs> what a mess I've made. Masterpieces. We all make sacrifices. Yeah, I probably should have just gone with the, the trophy first to bait out the counter spell. But I must tend to my creations. The weak feed the strong. <laughs> They're just never going to kill the Soren. Soren's gonna kill him. I mean, it's really Othakaya. <laughs> you waste your stamina. I abhor my need for blood. <sighs> yeah, 
Yeah, Command the Dreadhorde would be nice right about now. What do I rate this standard format on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of enjoyability? Of course, that's that's a, you know certainly a subjective scale that everybody's would be different. <laughs> what a mess I think for myself, I would probably say. Probably say an eight. For myself. There's, I, I really like how there are so many good cards in standard and uh, you, know, you can play, like you know, we play decks of all sorts of different color combinations and everything and, and all sorts of different decks and you know, like, Sure, we may not be playing like the the best decks in standard, but like we're playing decks that are competitive, and you know, <clears throat> played tons and tons of different ones. Even though I don't, I don't really care for the Teferi's too much, but I mean, I I like Little Teferi more than I like. Uh, yeah, I can I can definitely. Definitely say I like Little Teferi more than I like uh, Wilderness, like a Wilderness Reclamation. So can't complain about the card too much. Hmm. Yeah, I want to prison the token. Yep. Vampirism is a useful trait. I walk a righteous path. Share in my life. Indestructible. Light. This game has been kind of incredible. How this Sworn is just pinging over and over and over again. Hey, Zerf. Happy Friday. I'm expecting my opponent to have settled the wreckage here, to be honest. I am whole, my need blood. Prepare for battle. So I'm not attacking with Gideon. I want Gideon to be able to like, you know, minus and everything. We saw settle the wreckage last game. They're sitting with these cards in hand. I think it would make sense for one of them to be a settle the wreckage. This isn't a fight you can win. Trust me, I have a plan. If you wish to surrender now, I understand. Hone your prowess. Only time will tell. Time Kill that. Drink. So this is a pretty decent test for us here. You know, if they have 
know, if they if they absorb this Seraph of the Scales, then okay. If they would have, then they would take down Settle the Wreckage, but they just let it resolve. I believe in you, friend. Just the trick for no, I'm not sure my opponent has Settle, but I don't think that I need to attack with a Gideon right now. Just in case. Like, I'll attack with, like, the Seraph. But Gideon, like, being able to minus six is, like, really, is, like, really valuable. I, just, I don't really see the, like, you know, the upside, they, they chump block with their, you know, 1-1 one, one and everything. I don't know. We'll attack with other creatures. I train every to keep an open mind. Like, I'll, yeah, like, I'll attack with other creatures. I just don't really want to attack with Gideon. The world yields to art, not oppression. Unfortunately, our only three creatures were all exiled. Hey, there we go. <clears throat> so now if they block, they don't get to absorb Vivian. Justice is served. What a mess I've made. I guess I'm just letting the Gideon die to the other 1-1 one -one now, though. I was hoping that they would absorb or, or you know, like, a, sorry, or settle or tap out somehow. <laughs> yeah, of course, Shekel, Shekel. Feel the heat of my flames! <laughs> Magnificent! All right, so that's our yep. Yeah, that's our third Sarkin. I tried my best. I just really don't want the the Vivian absorbed. Like I'm not going to cast Vivian until we, until they counter something else. They're not countering Resplendent Angel though, because then I would just minus three the Soren and get it back. There's like minimal cost to myself. I Is it possible you. for us to deck our opponent? Yeah, yeah. Soren has so much health. I have so much health. Yeah, this Resplendent Angel is only our fourth creature we've drawn the whole game, <laughs> and all, th all the other three were all lava coiled. So yeah, we've we've never had an, a minus X target in the graveyard the whole time with the Soren. Boss is a little odd here. That's pretty odd. Do they have like something that deals one damage? 
Or are they just letting me gain five life and then getting an angel at end step? Wow. Yeah. They just let me gain five life and then get an angel at end step. Pretty sure we got this right about now. Embrace the bloodlust. So, you know, we have we have both activations available here. Well, I don't I don't have a good attack. Ah, uh, that's annoying. I didn't have a good attack with the Resplendent Angel because the Resplendent Angel would be a 5-5, five five, but the Sarkin deals 1 to it, so they would, would be able to trade trade their 4-4 four four for it. We're still good. <laughs> You're working up my appetite. You belong to me now. Prowess. We still good. Ah, sorry. But yeah, it turns out having Soren at 15 loyalty, not bad. Alright, so I put one on top. Uh, just another opt. They're gonna deck before us. This comes down to decking. Hey, Stellar Knight with that Twitch Prime sub. Welcome to the channel. I don't know how long this game has been. But it's I think it's been very long. Those who cannot perceive beyond the veil of reality are lost. Sure feels like it's been really long. the trick for this. Oh no, Arena, don't... There you go. Come on, don't freeze up. Come on. You can make it through. Just always resolve these interplanar beacon triggers. Right on schedule. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. That's their last Narset. And their last Sarkin. They have three other Narsets. And... Three other Sarkins gone, right? Or no, is that or is that just their third Sarkin? One, two, oh, I guess that's just their third Sarkin. Your end has arrived. Okay. 
I don't know, debatable. Okay. I can't. So I have 12 mana. 1, 2, 3, f so 5, 10, 12. You have 12 mana. So I can just do one of these things and then have the mana to activate. I can't do both. So playing Shalai here means means they can't like shock my Resplendent Angel. And now, you know, like, if I would have played Vivian and Vivian killed their thing and then had Resplendent Angel kill their thing, then they could shock my Vivian. I don't really want them shocking a Vivian. We also get another 4-4 here. Alright, so they're out of Narsets. That's rude. Are they out of... They're like... Three war boss. Three little Teferi. I think. I don't know. They've gone through a lot of cards. They're down to 14 cards left. I don't... I honestly don't think that they can kill us. I, wish you I, I was poor. not prepared for this. Let's see if you're worthy. Like, I, I don't think they can even kill no us within time. Like I do. <clears throat> like, before they deck. Like, I don't think they could kill me in 14 turns. That Soren. When did we play that on, like, what, turn four? And just never. It never left the battlefield. That Soren took so much damage. It was attacked like 15 times. Ugh. That was a crazy game right there. Yeah, I was out there for like around around 20 turns. So I should go back um, count how many turns that Soren was in play and how many times he got attacked. Or just, just how many turns that thing wasn't played. It had to have been dozens, maybe even millions. I'm not sure how numbers work, though. Why does that curve have to be so good? Firebrand, Pyromancer, Chain Whirler, Frenzy. What is this? What is this? Ow, ow. Hmm. I was really hoping they'd play that Chain Whirler already.
Hey, Matthew. So they have, if they have a lightning strike here to kill the Seraph, then the Chain Whirler cleans up the tokens, and that's annoying. Which is exactly what's going to happen. I was hoping they were going to play the Chain Whirler previously, and I was going to cast down it. But So that's why I still played the cast down last turn on the 2-1, because this was going to happen. And therefore, you know, would have been taking another 2 damage and everything. Don't think I can wait a turn here. I don't think I can take the damage. Cat this. Whoa. Yeah, I like it. I like I like me some three mana three four. I like it. Yeah, that firebrand dealt what six damage. Bleh. When people start screaming, what's that smell? Oh, it's you burning. We need to draw Lyra Dawnbringer or Soren. Lyra, Soren, or a Planeswalker removal spell. Okay, one of those cards. Not Godless Shrine. Sit back and watch it burn. Ooh, I, can, I can block that thing. Can't block that. That's going upstairs. All right, we're finally getting some damage in. Yuck. They brick here with two draw steps. This is just gonna be bad for you. With four draw steps. Dang. Third one got us. If we would have drawn a Soren, we could have taken out Chandra and not taken any damage. So we definitely want these Shalai's, Contempt, um, Othakaya, another trophy. Like no Paradise Druid. I probably want Mortify. I don't know, maybe Kai's Rats. No Liliana. I really want fine finality. Everything does cost four. But it's not the worst spot to be. So Vivian helps us find Lyra and can kill Frenzy. I 
Basically, the only thing I'm debating about here is third Seraph or second Vivian. I'm not sure if I want second Vivian or third Seraph. As we saw, like, them just, you know, bolt the Seraph and then chain whirl the tokens, you know, like, this isn't always the best. I'm going to go third Seraph, though. Seraph, you know, makes, makes Orin better, makes Lyra better. Oh, Land of War Elves did not get a card, huh? So it looks like they're letting Land of War Elves rotate. Yeah, that Kethis card does look really sweet. Abzian, Abzian Legends. I'm all about that. Having Lyra Dawnbringer cost four. Shillai cost three. Got to make it four color. Oh man, it's legendary spells, right? So Kamal's Druidic Vow costs less. Got to spark double that thing. Rotation only happens once a year, LLV. Just only only whenever the small set. Or sorry, the, the fall set. Only when the fall set is released. Good card, good card. So don't have to worry about that yet. Hey, Bloodheart. Yeah, you... Yeah. Didn't have much there, especially the game two. Especially that game two was really rough. And then game three, we, we both just had like some removal spells and we're just sit, sitting there staring at each other. We had definitely some good games there. That game one hand was was awesome with the mox, you know, on the play with that mox amber. It was just it was just perfect. But yeah, heck heck of a match there, Bloodheart. GGs. We need to attack with Lyra. That's awesome. The bad part is I would normally want to play Resplendent Angel here, but we know that they have a Lava Coil. I guess if they're Lava Coiling Resplendent Angel, they don't get to Lava Coil Lyra, I suppose. Yeah, the best sets to buy are Guilds of Ravnica, War of the Spark, and uh, Ravnica Allegiance. Those are the best sets to buy. Alright, so they are going after Lyra. Tilt. So I'll let them have even more mana with Steamkin. I want another 4-4 four, four flyer and putting him down to 6. You know, like this is... Yeah, I'm I'm assuming the Resplendent Angel is going to die here. But next turn we can like Folly back Resplendent Angel, kill the Steamkin, or just replay the Angel. Come on, hit a, hit a land pocket. No. They're not hitting land pocket.
At least no burn spell so far is good. All right. So yeah, I expect Atlanta Worlds is rotating then, since it got its number crunched out right now. So yeah, I'm expecting it to rotate. I don't think they're going to reprint it in the fall set. So I think I think we're going to have standard without Lanor Elf here in a little bit. But yeah, it's a huge, huge hit to green. It's it's a very, I mean. Beating Kaya's Wrath without Lanor Elf is kind of tough. Like getting under Kaya's Wrath, it's a it's a huge boon to Kaya's Wrath decks. Getting rid of Lanor Elf. Question is, do you expect Standard not dominated by Esper anytime soon? I mean, we'll have to see. By the time, after rotation, so like this fall, we only know, like we only, I guess we know, I was going to say we only know three of the set, three of the five sets. We only know 60% of the card pool, but I guess that's not exactly true because we know a lot of the cards in M20. So, you know, we're closer to like knowing like 70, 75% of the card pool in the fall so like there's a there's an entire new set in the fall and whenever they print the fall sets also they always like having um having like they want the fall sets to be splashy and like at rotation when it's a new standard they want they want the new set to to be um to uh to be the focus of the new standard format So I wouldn't be surprised at all if, well, I shouldn't say, so I guess I shouldn't say I wouldn't be surprised at all, but uh, there's certainly a chance that Esper in the fall isn't the dominating set that it is now. Welcome to my adoring audience. Kai's Wrath. Okay, well that's, I can still kill a Steamkin. And next turn I play Dawnbringer. My assistants are painfully sloppy. And I hope they don't have another burn spell to kill Dawnbringer. To go with this coil. Yay. I did not stop this fight, but I find that <laughs> I'll leave. Time for a drink. All right. Got there. And we are three and O oh, and moving on. Um, <laughs> Storm, no, they're not going to reprint Birds of Paradise in the fall. Uh, Elvish Mystic, I guess is is Elvish Mystic number crunched out because I, I guess that, that would be theoretically possible. <laughs> Thanks once again. I really like that new angel. Yeah. What's it? It's Safara, Sky's Blade. I like that card. I like me some angels. I'm going to make an angel deck or, you know, a flying deck. I'm definitely going to make a Safara deck for sure. We get some 
Get some Tamiks in there as another flyer. And Remorseful Cleric. And that cool dinosaur. Uh, what is it called? Kinjali Sunwing. Heck yeah, get some Kinjali Sunwing up in here. We can make a flying deck. We can make a sweet flying deck. Yep, deck's running hot. I don't think Soren's going to be out for 37 turns this game like it was that last game against Jeskai. Oh, man. I would... Man. What if they reprinted Boil? Reprinted Choke? Um... 37 turns is pretty close to actual fact. I don't. It's certainly over 20. I don't, don't remember the. Ex, I don't know the exact number. I wasn't counting. It was definitely out there for over 20, 20 turns. Probably over 30. It was a crazy game. <laughs> I was going to discard the trophy because they're, they're light on lands. I don't really want to give them another land. All right, Gidgens, come on in. Contempt. Vivian. Another trophy. I could see them playing Thief of Sanity for Cast Down being good. I kind of like what we have going on right here, but we got to get rid of two more cards. Hmm. I think this is a matchup where I would like Liliana. Maybe just a resplendent angel because it dies to ritual of soot. And I guess we can take out one of the Sorens. Do that. Okay. So as as we've kind of seen, it's not necessarily easy for us to have creatures in the graveyard. Yeah, I agree with you, Trillix. I like Ugin more than Liliana myself, too. That was something that I talked about at the beginning of the video. With Planeswalkers being such, such a focus in the game, um, Ugin being able to kill Planeswalkers is quite valuable. Dang, well I didn't really expect them to have anything like really good on turn two since they didn't since they didn't take the duress. But yeah, I mean it's per it's possible they just drew the Escanta off the top though also. So I was gonna save the duress for like you know, whenever give us a little bit of time, because like their deck's gonna have just a lot of answers, so like we'll kinda wait a little bit, see whenever we have a threat that we want to duress first, take their removal and or counter magic, and then uh, play it. 
Hey, Guyver. Thanks for that continued support there, Guyver. And Moonpie. Getting that Twitch Prime sub in there also. Getting a double dose of hype boats here. Getting us to 10 subs on the day also. Hitting that first goal. So the, the one problem with Duress right now is it does kind of turn on there as Kanta. Havocus also getting in there. If you haven't gotten your hype boats in chat yet, go ahead and get them in there. Thank you so much, Havocus. Thanks for that support there. Yeah, we got banned Arcbow today. I'm changing up a few things with the deck. Like, mostly the sideboard. Uh, you know, you can... You know, the deck list is on my Stream Decker page, but... Trying some different stuff. I'm not happy with the Immortal Suns in particular. Alright, well, we have nothing going on here. So firing off Duress just doesn't, doesn't help us. So I'm going to let them just sit here and activate this as Kanta and see what we want to do about their hand afterwards. Yeah, we have four trophies in, the, in our deck. Yeah, trophy would be very good. Start taking out these Escantas. It'd be good. Hmm. If I were you, I'd just smelly, but effective. I guess I wasn't really considering Liliana coming down. I guess I should have used the Duress for that. Seeing they just had, you know, like, removal, counter magic, they were going to go find some more. But yeah, Liliana would have been a reason to use a Duress. Okay, so we definitely should have played the Duress earlier because, you know, they had the Ascanta. And then, yeah, playing one here would have been nice also. Vampirism is a useful trait. Hey, what's up, Huday? Thanks for that resub there. For 30 months. <laughs> Good help is easy Been here since the beginning. War. I don't know if, like, even if we would have duressed away the Ascanta, I don't know if it really changes everything. Like, I don't I don't know how we deal with this Doom Whisperer. But yeah, maybe we could have gotten that Ascanta out of there and maybe the Liliana too, but the Doom Whisperer. We're not dealing with that thing. Alright, Mortify, Gol Golgari Queen. Elder spell. We 
yeah, the, the one July. So I'm cutting Paradise Druid because we've seen from our opponent, you know, like Moment of Cravings, Tyrant Scorns, like you know, like all this cheap removal for them. Um, and so yeah, I kind of think they're they're gonna die, and like this should be a match that goes a little later, drawing a two one later on in the game. Not a very good draw. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut the Paradise Druids and see what happens. Prison Realm quite good against uh Amass tokens. Let's get one more land. Start playing some Seraphs. Yeah, it looks to be some pretty sweet angels in M19, or M20, sorry. I'm very glad they took Liliana instead of Prison Realm, to be honest. Oh, I don't really want to give them a target to just start playing Enter the God Eternals next turn. Uh, unless it's Seraph. You know, like, I'll let them... I'll let them enter the God Eternal Seraph, but I don't. I don't want them to, you know. I don't want them to kill Resplendent Angels with it. Yeah, but now we still have our Resplendent Angel. We'll let them do that again. And they make an 8-8 token. I guess I could have attacked with this one, because if they do that again, I'd, I'd have the other the other tokens to jump with. Yeah, I could have attacked with that other 1-1. One, one. No, there's no chance for Commander to come to Arena. Will. If we do draw land. Alright, if you play Doom Whisper, always wait until like about your until you're about to draw to surveil. You know, like they just kept two cards on top, but they don't they don't know what like could happen here. If we draw land, get to Liliana. Come on, deck, you can draw land. Land. <laughs> oh, we're off Guildgate. Gets me every time. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, contempt's good.
So what if they enter the God Eternals a 1-1 one, one token? Then I'd have to block with a Seraph and give Death Touch. So, you know, I mean, that's not even a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, the tap Scarlands are really good. Liana. Let us march into battle and make new comrades. A little death never hurt anyone. Yeah, I'm never gonna be able to convince you. Well, I don't. I don't have to. You'll see for yourself here in standard here in a little bit. So we'll see if they use their mobilized district to kill my Liliana, which would be smart. I should have left the creature back to protect against that. I suppose. Ugin. My presence alone will guide your your past is unwritten. I don't I don't like that play nearly as much. Could just activate their mobilized district. Now I get to kill their Ugin. Oh, the two color decks. I'll be playing four four temples for you know before you know even before rotation. Like the three color decks, I think you want like all your your shocks and and uh, checks. But like the two color decks, I'll be playing a bunch of temples also. One mana off of. Playing Seraph and activating Shalai Resplendent. That's rough. That thing gets the Doom Whisperer back. That's rough. Doom Whisper, you're sent to the prison realm for a reason. You don't need nightmare sphinxes getting you out of the prison realm. Remember when that happened in the story? The nightmare sphinx came to the prison realm and took Doom Whisper out of it. Mask is intimidating enough. A mind is a terrific thing to waste. Now, ooh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, not really. All right, the two seraphs offer lethal next turn anyway. So, like, they play Shalai, they can block one seraph. I guess if I attack here, then it's lethal without that. I'm just I'm gonna just go ahead and do this here though, because this Davriel is doing two damage to me every turn. In case cause like they could play Seraph and have removal spell for other Seraph, and then, you know, like, you know, game goes longer and I suddenly don't have 
I'm suddenly taking two from the Stavriel all the time, annoyingly enough. Ooh. Cool, you got a, there's a code for a Narset. I'll add that to the list of codes. I march into battle as your champion of justice. That's... Indestructible, do 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 do. Let's make sure this one works too. Hey, Rice Prophet. Happy Friday. Start of a start of a weekend. We've got enough mana to activate this memorial to folly if they try to field of ruin it. Okay, good. That one works. Uh, get out of my way! Waste not, want not. I was thinking about sacrificing the Seraph. I am exhausted. <laughs> Lil Liliana, poor Liliana, saying, I'm exhausted. Four and O. Oh. Final boss time. Let's get on to it. Get on to it. Ugh. But yeah, Doctor Ultra probably probably keep going with the the Ravnica cards and the War of the Spark cards. I recommend probably recommend making sure you got that good base. Oh, heck yeah, cheating in Haunted Hightower into play with New Soren. I'm all about that. Haunted Hightower is sweet. We, I played one donation deck one, once with it, like a Demir control deck, and it was really cool. It helped me win a couple of games against Mono Red, you know, having the lifelink and everything. <laughs> no. It's very still around to bounce it. No. Boo. So this being 4 and 0 oh right now, if we lose this, we will have an extra life. Hopefully we won't.
So the, the blue-white control deck, like the, this blue-white deck, it's unlikely that the two life is going to matter too much. Oh, maybe it will now. But I wanted just a shock in here just to spook him. I don't have anything going on, but just wanted to spook him. Maybe, maybe they'd be scared that I shocked in there. That was my plan there. Yeah, um, Arscog, yep, that's the best control deck in standard is Esper. With the fairy in our side. Yep, that's the one. Blah. I wish I could end step trophy this prison realm. Thank me later. And you know, attack the Teferi, but of course we can't. Sure, I'll just take the Soren. Next turn, I'm likely going to be playing Paradise Druid plus Cast Down. Draw land. Ugh. All right, punish for keeping the Soren. Definitely punish for keeping Soren. Okay, now we draw land. Come on, deck, draw land. How'd you expect me to save the angel? Did you want me to cast down the legendary Voja? Can't do that. All right, so what can we do here? I have six. We can deal with three. I'm dead. Could have gave myself, yeah. So I guess trying to cut, cut the sword. I could have gave myself if I would have just cast, you know, just spent the cast down and just used it during their turn. I could have gave myself another turn. Definitely give me these Kaiser rats. Give me these trophies. Give me things that these things that kill Nissas. I really like Gideon here.
Hmm. Yeah, if I would have gone Prison Realm, block and cast down, that's still lethal. Or if I would have, or I, you know, I could do the same thing of like play Resplendent Angel, block both, and cast down another a third one, that's still lethal. At that point. I don't think I want Vraska. I do want this Paradise Druid to help us get, help me get to six mana for like finality. Actually, I want I don't want Prison Realms. Give me this back. I don't want Prison Realms. I think. Oh, I guess Prison Realm is good against Krasis, still. But it's it's easy for them to get rid of Prison Realm with Teferi, Knight of Autumn, stuff like that. But I guess it's, it's still good against Krasis. So Soren only gives your creatures lifelink during your turn. And whenever whenever Soren dies, no, that, that lifelink is just off the off the bat you know, it's just off the table. It's, it's immediately gone whenever Soren's gone. But yeah, it's only during your turn, so. It's like if you're trying to block with lifelink, it doesn't you can't block with lifelink. Yep, that's that's normal, Lord. Gods bless us in our righteous cause. I guess I I guess I should play Chapel so that another land, another black white land, I could play Kai's Wrath. Yeah, <laughs> could assassin trophy the incubation druid. We'll show them. No, my responsibility. Here goes nothing. Seen that coming. I believe in you. <laughs> Stop. Gideon's pretty cool. Prepare for battle. <clears throat> Gideon's underrated. I'm known for my excellent timing. Let's try this. All right, can we get another land? Maybe Kaiserath here. Hit or two? Nope. It's only a matter of time. Another day, villain. Really want to draw lands. You know, like they could have like the white finale at any point and make a whole bunch of things. I really want to try to get to Kai's Wrath and finality and stuff like that.
Well, it gets us closer to finality, but not Kaya's Wrath. I don't want them drawing, you know, multiple cards a turn and everything. Gideon, you know, of course, is still a creature. It still gets to attack and all that kind of stuff. I will lend you my strength. So, Lord, maybe uh, check this. Yeah, if you haven't checked out that article series also, that can maybe help you out. Mass manipulation? Come on. Um, but yeah, so how do I balance a deck well? I want to make a green, white, and black deck. I had equal land parts, one and two mana creatures, and high mana creatures, but it was unusable. What gives? Well, you may not have had enough lands. With a three-color deck, you're mostly going to want to have, like, you know, 25 lands or so. So you probably want about 25 lands. You want to have, especially if you're trying to go equal parts, you're going to, you want to have, like, around, at, like, at least, well, around, like, 15-ish sources of each color. Uh, mass manipulation was terrible. To aid in the assault. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't elder spell. Also, sorry. I was I was thinking about that response. I was just gonna go Gideon plus elder spell. Well, this is just horrible. Wow, I just threw this game. Your light will cleave the darkness. That was horrible. Ugh. Yeah, you probably don't want a whole lot of enchantments and instants and all that Shed all that kind of stuff, right? My strength gave out. Well, that was dumb. It's basic forests are killing me. Yeah, we just gained some life there. They attacked a whole lot of creatures at Gideon. Oh, well, actually, it's going to work out. That's kind of good that I saved the Elder Spell. Can kill, kill that now. Do they just have Krasis, too? That was our last two cards. Dang. Just a draw five. That's incredible. Forgive me. Curse the darkness. Good. And they just had to activate Incubation Druid and we were dead. I mean, we're, we're dead anyway, though. Yeah, and Apollo's, Apollo's right there. Yeah, if, if you go with a three color deck, it's usually best to have. to pick out, like, a main. a main color. And then, 
you know, a main color, a secondary color, and like a third color that you don't use nearly as much of that you don't need right away. You know, it's not usually the best to play three equal parts. That mass manipulation got us really good. Yeah, I mean, I could just cast the Wrath, but we're still dead because of the Seraph of the Scale tokens. You know, like the Seraph of the Scale tokens still kill us. Well, yeah, so equal parts just puts really, really bad strains on your mana base. It's hard to to have like reliably have three different colors all the time every game. So you want it like as you can see with our opponent has a three color deck here and like as you can see like their deck is basically all green and playing a little bit of other colors. And so they just know that they need green mana and so they have a whole lot of green mana and then like a little bit of the other colors. No, we would not get those tokens. Our opponent had the Seraph. They would get those tokens. Alright, so same deck we just lost to. Our hand's not good. And if we draw another white source and we can go Seraph into Lyra, we have a chance. Farm Regiana, I can tell you right now they are very wrong. I'll tell you right now, Ban Ramp is not favored versus everything. Unfortunately, I have to block a three, otherwise I, I die. I can't just block Paradise Druid. Can we get white mana? I've got it. Hmm. Yeah, our mana base has just been killing us the last couple of games. We we really like the eight lands just being single color has really been killing us here recently. We were getting pretty fortunate uh, earlier. It wasn't hurting us so bad, but now it's not. We are our deck is not being fortunate. Anymore. All right, no Sorens. Yes, Kaya. Or like, yes, Gideon. Um. Hey, Lord, thanks for that sub. I appreciate that. I appreciate that support right there. That's our 13th subscriber of the day. Um...
Okay. So they're already going to have infinite mana. Okay, let's give this a try. I mean, Vraska 4 would be okay. The problem with Vraska 4 is, you know, like, you play it, you minus, you kill something. She's real, or real vulnerable, sorry, real vulnerable on the way back. Being at just one loyalty then and against a whole lot of mana creatures. You know, like, you can kill, like, one mana creature, but then, like, others can kill it. So it looks like we're dead. Turn three Nissa hasn't really ever been beaten. If I had two green, I would think about going trophy druid. Of course I don't. Yeah, ramp strong as a mechanic is just you know, magic's a game of mana, of having, of you know like, usually who wins in a game of magic is who spends more mana, and so these creatures that give you a mana advantage early on, it's very valuable. Our deck has not been kind to us with mana the last four games now. You know, like, we just, we can't double spell. We have too many basics. Like, you know, like, we just have too many basics in here. Just can't play two spells. The land will not forsake you. You know, and I... <laughs> hey, Evad. Yep. I'm here. Kasmina? Come. My students are loyal and brilliant. On. Hmm. <sighs> it's just a bummer. We just can't play our cards. Loyal geniuses. All right, so lost. Ended up losing there a couple games to Ban Ramp, which is a very good deck. Our decks. Uh, 
Our deck ended up really struggling with mana. Um, so yeah, so uh, well, basics are, are certainly good at times. The six basics plus two Memorial of Follies, eight lands that were just single color, just made it so we couldn't play spells the, those last games, and that you know, like that could just be easily fixed. Like there's just really not there's there's just not really a reason to play this many single color lands um you know like we could you know we can be playing more of like these shock lands and and stuff like that so it, it was okay for a while and it didn't bite us for a while but you know after afterwards you know seeing those games game after game of not playing not being able to play stuff um you know just wasn't wasn't too good there um besides that like liliana was like so, we have we we do have uh, twenty. F how many lands was in this deck? We had twenty five. Okay, so twenty five lands is okay. It's an okay amount of lands. Um, but Liliana just wasn't. You know, again, like this wasn't really a card that was that good. You know, and I don't I don't know if we ever. Like, did we ever play this? I guess we I think we played it one game. But a six mana card, you know, it's just just really really expensive for a card without. You know, we we don't have card draw. And so six mana cards are really expensive. We saw there are a lot of games where we're just sitting at four mana. Um, I'd want less of this, and um, you know maybe Ugin, like like we we're talking about. I think Ugin's just a better card in general um, over that. Uh, I liked how we had two Kai's Wraths on the sideboard. I could use some more for like those those ramp decks because they they are pretty popular. I could use some more. And I, I would just take out find finality also. Like you have Soren to bring back stuff. And I know the finality part can kill can be a sweeper that's like main deck, but I would rather just have like Kaya's Wrath, honestly. Um I don't know. I'm not a big fan of find finality. Um Let's see. Cast down was okay, but could probably be be something better. Like maybe just mortify there definitely need more elder spells in the deck too i mean el elder spells these days it's just a card you just need more of trophy was good duress was meh it was all right gideon was awesome soren was okay um but Yeah. Well, that's kind of our deck, you know, you're just like really reliant on on like your regular draws with with the deck not having like any kind of like real card advantage. Like the the Vivian, you know, like the one Vivian is kind of like the only card advantage there. Um but There we go. Um hey Morgan. So that's uh Abzan Midrange. Started off well for us, but then uh towards the end our mana base uh really really hurt us the last couple matches like four games in a row of not either either being able to play our spells or not double spelling and just the eight eight lands you know that weren't dual lands were just killing us you know like we had like both our forests when we have kaya's wrath and things like that it was just it was it was bad um yeah kiora is awesome love me some kiora yeah, Kiora is like a ramp spell. It could be some card advantage, but you need to play more than just like the Seraphs for for Kiora. I mean, Seraphs and Lyra is like you need more than six things. You'd want, you know, like 10 things with Kiora for targets there. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could be playing our own Nis Nissas. And Nissa is like that's card advantage because you're getting a 3 3 every single turn, you know, like it's like a new 3 3 every turn. It's pretty good. <clears throat> All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, but that's it here for Abzan Midrange. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for another video.